Hello, crime lovers. During my time traveling and going to crime locations around the Chicagoland area in Illinois, I came across Centralia, a small town in the middle of Illinois, where a number of people have disappeared or died under mysterious circumstances. I will drive around this historical mining town and tell you what happened and pay a visit to the Devil's Playground, where they all vanished without a trace. Let's check it out. Centralia is located about 270 miles southwest of Chicago, 60 miles east of St. Louis, Missouri, and it shares the counties of Jefferson, Marion, and Clinton. It has a population of under 13,000. Centralia is named for the Illinois Central Railroad, built in 1853. The city was founded at the location where the two original branches of the railroad that converged. Centralia was first chartered as a city in 1859. In 1947, a coal mine explosion near the town killed 111 people. Folk singer Woody Guthrie wrote a song about the tragedy called The Dying Miner. Decades later, Centralia would be known for the disappearances and unexplained deaths of people that either lived in the town or were just passing through. I'm going to drive on Joliffe Bridge Road. To an area known as the Devil's Playground, where devil worshippers have been rumored to abduct and torture males of all ages. Some were found dead, but the rest were never to be seen again. The Suspicious Death of Dan Beetle, 1984 On July 21, 1984, Dan Beetle was found injured but alive near a road. He was reported to be a hit and run and he died from his injuries the next day. His parents were suspicious about his death, and the case was reopened 12 years later. Tips poured in, and the county sheriff's department changed their view, and now the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, meaning he was beaten to death with a baseball bat. No one was ever arrested, and there are no suspects. His murder remains a mystery. 15-year-old Joshua Mahaffey disappears in 1991. October 12, 1991. After an argument with his mom, Josh climbed out of his bedroom window and left with a friend. This was the last time the mom would see her son. After departing his mom's house, the two boys met up with another friend, Terry Martin, and his girlfriend in the shopping center. An eyewitness saw the Ford take off in a blue Ford Maverick. They returned hours later, but without Josh. The car was mud splattered, and Joshua was never seen again. Josh was a frequent runaway, so his mother was now worried and was waiting for him to come back. But he never came back. And the mom finally reported him missing on November 12, 1991. His so-called friend Terry is a suspect in his disappearance. In 2003, while serving time for raping a six-year-old girl, Terry Martin bragged to another inmate that he killed a boy named Josh in 1991. While Terry was in prison, another friend, Tanya L. Collins, who was a teen in 1991, told police that she'd witnessed Joshua's torture and murder in a satanic-type ritual right here in the Devil's Playground. She passed a polygraph in 1996, but failed a second one in 2008. She was placed under hypnosis and led authorities to Joshua's supposed burial site in the Devil's Playground, but a dig of the area produced nothing. Collins named Martin as Joshua's killer, but there were no concrete evidence to pin Martin for this murder, besides hearsay and unreliable witnesses. To this day, Joshua remains a missing person. William Bill Stutz was last seen alive on January 2, 1997 on Joliffe Bridge and College Road intersection. His body was found on March 26, 1997 after it washed out of Crooked Creek and into a field a field that years later would be the scene of another crime. An autopsy was performed and the result was inconclusive. 
Was he a victim of Satan worshippers? His death remains a mystery. On April 2011, 75-year-old Vincent Wesselman was last seen possibly walking near Breeze Grain Company at North 1st Street and North Walnut Street. Vincent has not been seen ever since. The disappearance of 28-year-old Jared Hanna on July 2nd, 2011. Jared Hanna was a loving father of two young daughters and was a responsible man. But something sinister happened to Jared in the Devil's Playground. The night before he went missing, he visited a couple of bars and was later spotted at 11.45 a.m. on July 2nd on a surveillance camera at a gas station in Jerseyville, Illinois. He bought a soda and was smiling. At 12.15 p.m., his phone pinged at East Alton. It didn't ping again till 9.30 p.m. that night. It showed him to be close to Centralia, Illinois, and he was calling the mother of his kids. It is not reported what the call was about. After that call, his phone never pinged again. His 1990 GMC Sierra truck was found abandoned and out of gas parked on Joliffe Bridge Road, more than 70 miles from his home on July 5, 2011. Police believe after running out of gas three miles from the trailer, Jared went looking for help. One witness claims they saw him walking down Joliffe Bridge Road at 11.30 p.m. on July 2nd. Another witness says Jared knocked on their door at 8.30 a.m. on July 3rd asking for water and directions to a gas station. Nobody knows why Jared was so far from home and why he was in Centralia late at night. Was he led there by someone? Was he looking for something or someone? He was supposed to be picking up his daughters that night. So what was he doing there? Three months later on October 9, 2011, Jared's black duffel bag was found five miles from where his truck was found. It was found under a tree stand in the field where William Stutz's body was found years earlier. Years have gone by and still no one knows what happened to Jared. He simply vanished without a trace. On April 23, 2014, James Jimmy Romines, age 63 and mentally handicapped, was last seen by his neighbor around noon at the Centralia apartment. He did not have any form of transportation. He did go on long walks but always came back. Not this time. He was taken by someone never to be seen or heard from again. The last and hopefully final incident happened on March 20th, 2016 when 26-year-old Keith Wayne Royer vanished without a trace while visiting a friend at this trailer home in Australia. According to Keith's mom, he was panicked about something and was planning to quickly move away with his girlfriend and three young children to a safer area. Anyway, Keith and his friend were, were driving around Centralia in the friend's pickup truck, and for some unknown reason, Keith jumped off the truck like if an unknown force scared him off to death. After jumping off, he ran like he was being, being chased by an unseen entity. Keith was never seen or heard from again. What is going on in Centralia? Five disappearances and two mysterious deaths and still no answers to what happened. Is there a serial killer or killers prowling around Centralia and just snatching random males to kill for pleasure? Or are there demons haunting Centralia and taking men of all ages for sacrifices to appease evil spirits? Or is it just bad police work or something else sinister? Update. On Monday, March 1st, 2021, a father and his daughter found a human skull while hunting in the woods near Joliffe Bridge Road and Lynn Street, known as the Devil's Playground. They contacted the sheriff's office and officials arrived on the scene just before 2.30 in the afternoon. Officials searched the area and found more than 30 human bones before dark fell. They returned Tuesday morning and completed their search Tuesday afternoon. The remains were then handed over to Illinois State Police crime scene investigators for testing. And here we are in the beginning of 2022. There is still no word to who the bones belong to. I'm hoping that this year they identify those bones as belong to the vanished men so their families will get, finally get some answers. 
and also to find the killers responsible. Time will tell. But for now, stay away from the devil's playground. 